Well, big news. Google just dropped VO 3.1. And despite being just a 0.1 update, there's some pretty impressive stuff in here. Maybe not quite worthy of VO4, but well, they also didn't name it VO4. Uh, that said, in my opinion, I think they're being a little humble. This is really worth more than, you know, a 0.1. So today we'll dive in to see what's changed and well, why it's a big deal. I'm really excited to be back for VO 3.1. I was worried that everyone forgot about me, but now I'm back. It's good to have you back, buddy. Plus, Sora just dropped their big update, native 25 second generation, and the return of the storyboard feature. You know, we're still a bit off from the holiday season, but gang, we are getting spoiled with presents. Kicking off, after about a week of rumors and, well, frankly, some shady and incorrect specs churned out by the rumor mill, Google have released VO 3.1, touting it as an upgrade that has more quality, consistency, and control, richer audio and dialogue with narrative comprehension, enhanced realism, and better real-world understanding. All of which is great, but what really excites me is a lot of the features that we've been waiting for for VO 3 are finally here. We'll jump into all of those, but first let's just take a look at the 3.1 model in action, uh, kicking off with some text to video. The border is right past those trees. So that was a text to video prompt that we ran in VO3 a while back. I still maintain that troop is not making it to the border. Uh, let's check that out now in VO3.1. The border is right past those trees. So overall, I mean, I'd have to say a subtle improvement here. I don't necessarily know if it's coming through via YouTube audio compression, but the audio does sound a little bit better, like richer and deeper. Um, and, you know, in general, we definitely see a lot more like color saturation in that sunset. Um, yeah, these guys are still not making it over the border, though. That said, I think most of you who watch the channel tend to work in image to video anyhow. So grabbing this old chestnut, the prompt here was nothing more than woman walks forward, man turns and follows her. So that was early VO3, VO3.1 gives us this. Now, while I do have to say 3.1 just decided to create a light source behind our woman as she was walking forward, I do kind of like it. There's actually kind of a nice lens flare going on there. Uh, but I mean, overall, I think that you can definitely see a difference in terms of like just overall fidelity and texture uh, between the two versions. Uh, our, our characters here definitely look a lot better. One last image to video comparison before moving on because we could be here all day. Here is a Bethesda inspired 3.0 output. Hey, you. You're finally awake. You were trying to cross the border, right? Wait, this is the wrong game. So that was a fairly early 3.0 output. You can tell because well, subtitles. Uh, so let's try it out now in 3.1. Hey you, you're finally awake. You were trying to cross the border, right? Wait, this is the wrong game. So definite improvements there for one, no subtitles and two, uh, it didn't jumble the lines. So overall, in general, I definitely do see an improvement in the video model. Uh, it's subtle, but I, I, you know, again, it's a 0.1. But again, I think the real gems in the 3.1 update are the new features. Uh, we are going to be focusing on the Flow platform here. The features, I believe, are rolling out via API, but you know, each platform is going to, you know, essentially implement it in different ways. Uh, I figure, you know, for sake of clarity, we're gonna just going to stick to the mothership here. So first off, we finally now do have first frame, last frame in VO 3.1. And you know, it, I mean, it works pretty well. So utilizing these two images as a first and last frame, we get. Did you use the new first frame, last frame feature on VO 3.1? I know, it's pretty good, right? Overall, I'd say the feature does work pretty well. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time here because, well, frankly, I mean, it's first frame, last frame. That said, it is very nice to have it on VO 3.1. Now, one feature that I have been eagerly awaiting is the new ingredients to video feature, which uh, kind of acts like whisk, but for video or like references that uh, create sort of a bit of a hybrid between text to video and image to video. With the ingredients feature, you can take up to three reference images, say like two characters and a location, uh, and then write a text prompt and it'll, it'll sort of blend them all together. Uh, for example, taking this character, this character, and this location. Wow. Each part of this video is taken from a different still image. 
and we are just ingredients. This is incredible. I mean, that is pretty good. It really does take me back to uh, The Bridge, the AI short film that I did with uh, like early VO2, like pre-release VO2, um, where, I mean, I had to use every like hack and trick and work around in the book uh, in order to get some kind of consistency going. Um, here, let's just take a quick look at a, a small snippet here. Hold, barbarian. Do I pass or do I take your head? And while I'm not unhappy with the way that that final piece turned out, you know, considering that that's where we were at the time, uh, given the new ingredients feature, I mean, this is much closer to what I had originally envisioned. Hold, barbarian. Do I pass or do I take your head? Additionally, we finally have scene extensions, meaning you can break out of the eight second limit. Now you previously could do this on flow. It would just kick you down to VO2. Now I've had a couple of questions on how this works, so it might not be obvious. Uh, we'll take a look at this quick clip. Uh, definitely very Twin Peaks inspired. It is a damn fine cup of joe, but how's the pie? So if we want to run an extension on this, we actually have to utilize Scene Builder. Uh, this one's already in the scene, but you can see over here, uh, you would just click Add to Scene. From here, what you wanna do is hit the plus button here and hit the Extend button. Uh, and then at that point, we can text prompt to say what happens next. It is a damn fine cup of joe, but how's the pie? The pie is amazing. It's an old recipe from the log lady who got it from the owls. Not too bad. There are, of course, a couple of problem spots. Uh, the biggest, of course, being that, you know, the music completely drops as we hit that extension. I did talk to DeepMind about this. They are aware that is something that we will probably see patched out at some point in the near future. Additionally, I do have to say it can get a bit wonky, especially if there's any kind of occlusion happening at the handoff point, uh, for example. I wonder if this old bucket will hold together for the rest of the journey. Oh, she'll pull through. What was that? So yeah, definitely capable of being a bit wonky, but also kind of a really cool magic trick by Captain Richard Branson there. Um, I do think that there are probably some like on-platform workarounds, especially considering that if you hit this like plus icon here, that will uh, instantly save out your frame as a screenshot, and then you can bring it in as a frames to video for uh, an extension or a cut to. So yeah, I mean, I, th I think that there's definitely, you know, if you're running into these issues, there's probably a creative solution to get around it. Overall, I'd have to say that conceptually scene builder is a really cool idea. It's, it's just not quite fully baked yet. As a quick note, you actually can trim clips within Scene Builder as well. Although, you know, it's a lot of guesswork and is, is not very exact. I don't highly recommend it. Additionally, if you want to move clips around, you have to come over to this button and then you can move clips around. So, I mean, it's definitely not like the most intuitive of features. All that said, I do think that they're onto the beginning of something very useful and powerful here. Uh, the question of course is like, how far do you take it before it just becomes you know, DaVinci or Premiere on Flow? One final quick note on extensions. It does look like you can't extend old uh, 3.0 clips in 3.1. So I've tried this a couple of times. Uh, it just, it, it doesn't give you the submit button. So I don't know if that's a glitch or if that's just, you know, something that is not compatible in the architecture. Rounding out on the new features, we now have the ability to add things to a scene. We also have the ability to remove things that has not been released yet. So testing out add, um, we're just gonna do, uh, we're gonna do a non-canon man in a blue business suit. I wonder where my arctic wolf is. I have no idea why VO decided to go musical with that one, but whatever. Um, so in order to add things in, all we have to do is come up to this uh, little pencil icon. From there, we can either just prompt in whatever we want to see, or we can create a bounding box uh, here and then describe what we want to see in it. Uh, obviously, we're gonna put our wolf. I wonder where my arctic wolf is. Overall, I mean, that's a pretty impressive insert uh, considering, uh, you know, the wolf and his shadows all match the scene, uh, looks contextual to the scene. I am a little worried about the observational powers of our man in the blue business suit, but that's neither here nor there. So overall, I mean, I think the real powerhouse in 3.1 is all of these features, especially if you start mashing them together in Scene Builder. Uh, for example, uh, I did get a really impressive first and last frame POV shot, kind of in a video game style, um, and then adding two extensions to the end of it, uh, we ended up with this. Hey. 
Have you found the treasure yet? Captain, another ship on the horizon. Then we don't have much time. Then it's up to you to find that booty. Also, if you don't wipe that grin off your face, I'll make you walk the plank. Personally, I might as well just start walking the plank right now because there is no way that I'm not laughing at booty. So final verdict, in my opinion, this is a pretty amazing point one update from the Google team. Again, especially considering all the features that they've implemented in. Now, is there more road to travel? Yes, but again, point one, guys. I do certainly feel that there's a lot to be discovered with all of these new features and toys. And I look forward to seeing, you know, the workflows and ideas that you guys come up with. Okay, next up, OpenAI heeds the call with a big update to Sora. But first, I will say that this one is relevant to your interest and actually gets a little bit weird. Uh, let's head over and check in with our friends at Recraft. So agentic workflows are taking off. We took a look at one earlier this week and I've got another one for us today from our friends at Recraft who were kind enough to sponsor today's video. As many of you know, I have featured Recraft a number of times on the channel. They are primarily an image generation platform aimed at professional creators and designers. Recraft offers a variety of models, styles, and editing features, and I think they're the only platform that will output as SVG or vector graphics, and of course they have their own Red Panda model. And they have introduced a new chat feature, which you can use to generate, edit, and uh, actually even brainstorm with. Uh, to get started with the chat mode, all you have to do is come up here to this corner and toggle the chat on switch. Um, that will, you know, obviously provide you with the chat window, which uh, gives you a couple of like ideas in terms of like things that you want to do. So opening up the chat, here's where things get a little bit weird, but a lot of fun. Uh, I decided to take it out for a spin with this concept of uh, creating a mood board world building exercise uh, about a you know sort of a high fantasy Dungeons and Dragons type world, except all of the magic was powered by music. The idea here being to like brainstorm what what do the characters look like in this world? What does the world look like? Um, and like, how does it all operate? And like the, the chat mode was more than happy to go along with this. One of the first concepts that we developed was the hip hop paladin. And I, I absolutely love this guy. Uh, he definitely swings that boombox in the name of truth. One of the next concepts we started working on was the blues man wizard. Uh, you know, some mixed results here. It initially began uh, with uh, this guy who I thought uh, personally, I thought was a little too young uh, to, to be like a wizard type. We then tried an illustrated style, which I, I honestly did not end up loving this at all, uh, before finally landing on this guy, who I do think kind of captures uh, Delta Blues Gandalf, which is like the dumbest thing in the world to say, but I, also he's kind of awesome. We'll talk about the agentic part of it in just a minute, but I do just want to kind of circle back on the fact that it's really handy just to have a chat right there in app with you. Uh, like when I was trying to come up with more ideas, I was just like, well, give me like 20 more archetypes of fantasy um, and then we can start working off of those, which is essentially how like EDM Druid and uh, Elven Shredder came to be. Oh, I also need to shout out the one shot that was Reggae Cleric. I mean, that is chef's kiss, no notes. So moving over to more of the workflow and agentic side of things, um, the fact that chat can essentially control your session as well. So these are our uh, villains, are uh, the demonic uh, classical composers. I, I have nothing against classical music or composers. Uh, they, they just, they, they make for good bad guys. So if we wanna make any changes or anything, all we have to do is select this image. Uh, the modify image will come up here. And then obviously um, you actually have access to everything that's on Recraft here. So you can use uh, any of the Recraft models or styles, uh, Nano Banana, the GPTs, Sea Dream, uh, Im Imagine 4. It is Imagine 4, by the way, that is confirmed. Uh, Flux and uh, all the way down to uh, Quen and High Dream. Uh, so let's go ahead and banana this real quick uh, and just say, change the over overall color tone in this image to blue. I mean, nothing really all that crazy um, and fire it off and and obviously the banana handles that without any problem. Uh, and I mean, from here, what's, you know, again, what's cool about Recraft is that um, we can change it out of Nano Banana. Let's try it out in Sea Dream uh, and just say, give me four different angles and shots based off this image. Give this a run, see what happens. And that is, of course, a complete walk in the park for Sea Dream. Boy, these guys really do look evil, don't they? And ultimately, if you want to stylistically unify things, uh, you can do so utilizing any of like the Recraft styles or create your own as I do here. Um, yeah, simply by coming into the Recraft model here, uh, going into style, 
And then under my styles, I've got a couple of them that I created here that end up outputting kind of an indie lo-fi graphic novel look that I, personally I like. So look, I've been on record in the past saying that I don't fully love agentic workflows, but I will admit this is starting to slowly win me over. If you'd like to try out the chat mode for Recraft, there is a link down below to join up on the wait list. Uh, in the meantime, you can just go over and try out Recraft totally for free. They do offer a free tier with 30 credits renewed daily. Uh, and then if you're interested there, it's just just kind of a, like a hop up to $10 a month for the pro plan. I do highly recommend checking Recraft out. At the very least, you know, sign up for the free plan. They're always great to have in your back pocket. Um, yeah, I'll be keeping an eye on what's coming up next with Recraft. And as always, my thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. Moving on, not to be left out of the party, uh, the OpenAI gang released an update to the Sora model. Uh, namely that uh, all users can now generate up to 15 seconds on app and web and pro users can generate up to 25 seconds on web. Now, as a quick note, the 25 second long generations are not available, uh, even if you're on the pro plan, you know, from directly prompting, you do have to move over to the storyboard in order to access that. What is my cameo doing up there? He's, he's been all over the place. Um, so firing this off, we're going to take this image, obviously, you know, Sora does not like realistic people uh, and kind of create like, I don't know, just like an atmospheric lo-fi thing. So from here, you'll be able to text prompt each of your scenes out. Uh, and you'll notice that uh, as you add new timings in, um, all of this will update. You can also come in here and uh, auto adjust the timing if you're, I'm sorry, not auto, but manually adjust the timing if you if you want. I guess it kind of prompts you with ideas in terms of the timing. So if you want to get really granular in terms of like your shot timing, you can. That said, uh, you can't image reference anything within each of these scenes. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick 15 second thing here. And apparently I think all I can do is 15 seconds, right? Uh, yeah, for some reason, 25 seconds is blocked out here. I don't know why. Uh, anyways, let's take a look at this. Overall, I think it does a pretty good job here. Stylistically, it holds through, you know, consistent through all of the shots. It is a bit of a, like a, like a softball, uh, considering that it's kind of like this, like lo-fi aesthetic. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, I just did a whole thing on VO 3.1. I really did not have time to put it through its paces. I do think it's a good start for a storyboard UI. Uh, there are features that are very obvious to me that I would, I would like to see implemented. For example, the ability to upload new reference images for various scenes. I'll be curious to see as time goes on if it begins to more resemble uh, the Sora 1 storyboard. Uh, Sora 1, for all of its faults, did get a lot of things right. Um, the storyboard function here I thought was actually pretty good. That and the original Sora 1 video to video features, the video remix, um, this was a bit of a hidden superpower. Um, I mean, it could get weird and wonky, but man, when it hit, it could it could do some really pretty impressive stuff. Uh, still can. That's a feature that I am still hopeful that we'll see eventually updated in Sora 2. So I guess that's it for today. I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, two major titans releasing big updates this week. I guess that's it for today. Uh, I'm going to go check the news, see what else happened, because I'm sure it's like a hundred other things. So again, as usual, I'm sure I will see you again very soon. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.